Today, we're talking about CPU coolers for Intel's 11th generation CPUs. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're talking about CPU coolers for Intel's 11th generation processors, the Rocket Lake series. Even though that some of the lower end i5s or the i5s in general have a stock cooler in it, you would benefit from having additional cooling from uh, some of these aftermarket coolers. If you looked at a Gamers Nexus video that we'll link in the description below, you'll see that Intel wasn't as strict as AMD as far as specifications for their motherboard manufacturers. And depending on motherboard and also sometimes depending on the, the BIOS on it, these Intel chips can run hotter. So any additional cooling that you can put on it is a benefit. A couple things I wanna go over before we get into the recommendations of this buyer's guide. And the first thing is TDP, the most debated thing in a bunch of Reddit forums and even on YouTube channels or YouTube videos. And what's TDP? TDP is thermal design power. What does that mean? Good question, what does that mean? So the CPU manufacturers, Intel and AMD, have this term, this TDP wattage. And basically what it means is how much heat or how much cooling it needs to cool this and have it perform at optimal temperatures. But the rub is that the CPU manufacturers and the CPU cooler manufacturers don't calculate it the same. So the way that AMD and Intel calculates it, it's to me more of a marketing term. They want to be like, hey, you can, this has so this much power and you only need this much cooling. It's just a way for marketing guys to convince you to buy theirs because of TDP. If you look at a lot of cooler manufacturers, you'll see that they, a lot of them don't even have TDP on their packaging. In a world of computer standardization, you have standards for connections and software and all this other standardization throughout the whole industry. This is one aspect where there is no standard. And to me, TDP is not something that you should even consider. I'll link another Gamers Nexus video in the description below. And if you don't like how Gamers Nexus does things because Gamers Nexus can be a little technical. Linus Sebastian from Tech Quickies and Linus Tech Tips has a video about TDP that's a little more condensed and a little more broken down for people who don't wanna have a 20, 30 minute video about deep dive analysis on TDP. That's below. The next thing I wanna talk about is liquid versus air. Both of them have their cons and their pros. You look how I would switch it up, set of pros and cons. Anyway, when we're talking about air, I am a huge air fan, but air has its limitations. Air physically, no matter how much you love it, physically cannot dissipate or hold or absorb as much heat as liquid. That's just what it is. It just cannot do it. But what air cooler has in its advantages is that it has this huge heat sink. So let's say if the fan stopped working, you still have a big hunk of aluminum on top of your CPU still dissipating heat without having to actively cool it. Now, it will thermal throttle, unlike in the days of before where your CPUs just smoked and you had total meltdown failure. CPUs today will thermal throttle. So if it gets to a certain temperature, it'll just not perform above that. So it doesn't heat up and it doesn't fail. Liquid cooling, especially AIO cooling on the other hand, the advantage is that it can absorb and hold more heat and get more heat away from the CPU. Just like everything else, that if a radiator fails or a pump fails, or if you have a seal that fails, then it can cause some big damage. To me, what I found when it comes to liquid cooling, once you get to a certain price level and build quality, then as far as catastrophic failures like um, seals busting and liquid coming out isn't really a thing. It's usually with the cheaper builds and manufacturers you've never really heard of or hadn't been really tested. And so those fails, those are the ones you saw. As long as you have a certain price level and a certain manufacturer that is reputable, liquid cooling is still a really, really good option, especially when it comes to overclocking. So let's get started. We'll get into the budget range 
of our coolers. And the first one is going to be the Deep Cool Gamma Max GTBK. It is a slim air cooler. And the thing I like about this, two things is one, it has all these cool RGBs. And if you're into RGB, which I, I, I'm not, I just, RGB isn't my thing. And it being a slimmer air cooler, you don't have the problem like a lot of the huge air coolers have with RAM clearance. So sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times you have your RAM and it has those big heat spreaders on it. If it doesn't have the big heat spreaders on it, it has the RGB lights on top of it. And RAM has gotten taller and taller over the past years. And having a big cooler, especially a big air cooler on there, isn't optimal because sometimes, and you'll see um, some air coolers, they'll have a lot of plastic or they'll have just this big hunking aluminum that can scrape up against the RAM and you don't have the clearance that you need. This is slim and compact and does a pretty good job of cooling your CPU. It has four heat pipes to go ahead and dissipate the heat as effectively as possible. Also a good thing is if the fan does happen to fail, it's replaceable. So you can just take that fan out, put a new fan in and you run it. The next budget CPU cooler is from a company that I've liked a whole bunch and it's Arctic. It's the Arctic Freezer i13XCO. Now, be cautious of the i13X because they have an A13X. And if you're following along, the i13X is for Intel and the A13X is for AMD. So be careful when you're looking at it because they look the same, they look the exact same, but if you get the AMD, you won't be able to install it in there. So the i13X, this comes with the MX2 thermal paste pre-applied. I personally don't like using pre-applied thermal. I just, it's just a pet peeve of mine, even though the MX2 is not a bad thermal. So if you don't have extra thermal paste, it'll do in a pinch. I recommend either getting the Arctic Silver 5 or the MX4. MX4 is fantastic. I've been using it in a lot of builds that I've done in the past. The MX4 does a fantastic job of being a thermal paste. That's what it is. It is a slimmer air cooler, just like the deep cool one. And you don't have those problems with RAM clearance. But the one drawback to this is the fan isn't as easily replaceable. I don't think it's replaceable at all. And so if the fan ever fails, then that's a point, that's a con going against this. But as far as being a small air cooler that does a good job, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It doesn't have RGB. And if that's something that you're into, then this isn't a air cooler for you. But if you're looking to do a budget build and you want something a little more than that stock cooler, this does a fantastic job. Now we're getting into the mid range. And our first one is our first AIO cooler of the recommendation, and that's the Vitro's Lurker V240 water cooler. Not the most attractive name. Lurker isn't something I'm like, oh yeah, this is a really cool name. It has a good RGBs. If you're into that, the CPU, the water block has the Vitro or Vetro logo. So if you're not into that, it, it's also RGB, but it is, something that you have to consider if you don't like the design. Oh, since we're talking about AIOs, there's six different variants you should consider whenever you're doing it. They're based on the fan sizes. So you'll have the 120, the 240, the 360, and that's based on the 120 millimeter fan size. Then you have a little bit wider, a little bit bigger when you talk about the 140 fan size. So it's 140, 280, and 420. But what you have to remember is whatever case you're using, you got to make sure that it can fit in that case as far as being not too wide and not too long. Because you can't put a 420 AIO in an ITX case. And in my opinion, the cost to um, benefit of the 120 and the 140, if it's a very specific use case to use that on. If you can afford it, go a little bigger. I say no more than that second the one that has two fans on it, so the 240 and the 280. I wouldn't go anything less than that unless your design and your case absolutely calls for it. The cost to performance isn't there. But as far as being a good mid-range AIO, the Vitro's Lurker or the Vetro Lurker is a really 
good option. Let's talk about the darling of the tech world, and that's the Scythe Fuma 2. It is a huge honking air cooler, but unlike a lot of air coolers, like my favorite one, the Dark Rock Pro from Be Quiet, if you look at it, it's it has clearance for RAM. So it's this huge air cooler, has clearance for RAM, and does a fantastic job of cooling CPU. It has six heat pipes that helps dissipate all the heat that's coming from your CPU. The interesting thing about this, it has two fans. That's not the interesting part. They're going in different directions. And apparently, by them going in different directions, they help stabilize airflow. Even though the airflow is happening from front to back, it helps stabilize the airflow, I guess, to cool better. It's the only thing I can think of. And it's a really cool thing to see. Now, a lot of people have liked this CPU cooler, and me watching a lot of videos about it, and watching a lot of performance on this CPU cooler, I can say that if you like that black and gray aesthetic, which I love, uh, this is one to consider as far as build. Because let's face it, aesthetics is a huge part of a lot of people's builds. If it doesn't look the way you want it to look, it's, it does something. Even people are starting to add like characters like Funko Pops or little anime figurines to the builds because they want it to look a certain way. But if that aesthetic is something you're going for, like a blackout build or something like that, this is one to consider. Now we're getting into the premium air coolers. We're spending a little more money now. And this next one is the king of the air coolers. It's everybody's absolute favorite. And that's the Noctua NHD15. The king of air coolers. All the tech YouTubers love them. You see them in a lot of builds. Nobody has anything negative to say about it that I've heard of. Maybe you've had horrible experiences with them. I haven't. People I know haven't, people I know, uh, people that I watch on YouTube haven't, so tell me if you did in the comments below. Hey, I hate Noctua. They are a horrible company. I don't know. I've always liked their bravado because they they put out a cooler and be like, you know what? I'm gonna put a six year warranty on it. Not, not 30 day, not a year, not a two. I'm so confident in the ability of this air cooler, I'm giving you a six year year manufacturer's warranty and when you're in the tech world i can tell you that is not a thing even doing professional equipment where you get a lot longer warranty like you may get a year or two manufacturer's warranty on your parts but when me when i'm building things for work they'll give us three sometimes four years i've never have in i've never dealt with any other product in the professional world that gave you a six-year warranty that's just a lot of confidence in the product and it works it cools exceptionally well it is a big honking a big honking piece of aluminum it has the notch cut out for the ram clearance so it doesn't interfere with uh, with whatever ram you were going to use and it's just it just works it cools so well it, it it's the king for a reason it has a six-year warranty for a reason, it just works. The next one, the next one is the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF. It's a downdraft CPU cooler. Why would I add a downdraft CPU cooler? On a video before that I talked about CPU coolers, someone was like, hey, why don't you have downdraft CPU coolers in your recommendation? That's a valid point. So downdraft helps with Let's just say if you had a motherboard that had VRMs on it that weren't as properly cooled. A VRM, just think of a VRM as a power conditioner. It delivers the same consistent strong power to your CPUs, which is important when you're doing complicated processes and also when you're overclocking. So you need a steady, good stream of electricity going to your CPU. That's why some people use downdrafts, but usually use downdrafts for one or two reasons. One, if you're trying to keep your VRM cool and you're trying to overclock, if you're trying to keep your VRM cool and you're having a small case like a, a MITX case, yeah, having a downdraft CPU cooler is a good thing, but the most important thing is gonna be an exhaust fan, trying to get the heat away. So trying to move air somehow. So if it's, it could be either a downdraft CPU cooler or a exhaust fan, but something has to help cool those VRM down if that's something that you're uh, concerned about. 
if you don't have great airflow coming from the front, you need some way to get that heat out. And this does help. This downdraft cooler does act, cool the CPU, but it also cools things around it. So you can have better performance. So if you're looking for a better performance and you don't have a lot of movement in your case, as far as air, that downdraft can help out a whole lot. The last one, the last one is a behemoth of a cooler and it's the NZXT Z63 Kraken, the 280 variant. This is, to me, the most striking part of this is this, the water cooler block. It's a 24 bit screen that you can add anything to. You can have just the NZXT logo, which why would you do that? You can have a picture of you, you can have a picture of your dog, you have a picture of the grass outside. I don't know what interests you, but as far as customizability, you can have, let's say you have an anime theme. You can throw your favorite anime character up there. Let's say if you have a superhero theme, you can throw the best superhero of all time, Storm, up there and you can have a Storm build. The cooling performance on this is phenomenal. I've watched many videos about it and it does a fantastic job. The only con of this, it can be expensive. Not can be expensive, it is expensive. So if this is a little out of your range, they have an X variant of this so the x is cheaper and you still have some of the good performance but if i'm overclocking this is something that i will a hundred percent rely on if i was the overclock which i'm not a big overclocker this is something i would put in my build because as far as my confidence in it it's high as far as keeping my cpu cool and making sure that when i push it to that range of overclocking that as far as cooling, I wouldn't have any problem with it. Hey guys, that's it. Hopefully I was able to teach you a little something and give you some ideas about what you can do for your next build whenever GPUs come back in stock. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this type of video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like this type of video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.